Thank you. 
regardless of if there's fear or not. I think that's the most important thing that we're working on here. Shifting your energy so that you desensitize the fear as opposed to amplify it or heighten it. So, just... <laughs>
to yourself again. So, if you're new to the community, welcome, 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 babies. This is your nightly self-care routine. A place where you can just take care of yourself. Relax. You know, crack open a good book, fall asleep, or do whatever you need to do during this time to take care of yourself. And if you're new to the community, welcome if you are tiring, welcome, welcome back. Mama loves you. Let's go ahead and get started. So we start our session off with a prayer. It's not a religious prayer. It's a prayer to root us in our individual healing experience and bring us together as a community and as a collective. And because consent matters, to have your permission to say a prayer. Okay. 
Okay, during this session, we're working on your energetic connections, but there's going to be other areas in your life where you have to do work to, where you have to get that community, that guidance, and that self-motivation, and it is your responsibility to go after those things. So when your energy gets reconnected to something like, let's say, health, okay, you're suffering from some type of chronic health condition, when we reset your energy and everything is where it needs to be during the session, you typically will feel better or feel lighter, but you have to have your own self-care journey as well to keep up with the progress, and on top of that, there is an open connection here, the universe opens up a connection here, and then you're connected with a healthcare provider who finally understands what you're dealing with in ways that previous providers perhaps couldn't, and that's a part of the journey too. So we have to look at all of these things as complementary, and you want to have a whole team of people here for your health, and you gotta be the captain of it. You're the captain of the team. So this helps you see what is right in front of your face, and this is just a health example, because baby, y'all be, y'all be wanting me to give y'all these love examples too, and I could, you know, do that too. Uh, foundation is the same. But um, just different area in your life and what that means. So we're going to take out the health part and the healthcare providers, and we're going to put in partners. So here it is. We can work through some of this trauma that is associated with love and partnership. Because when we work on love, all it really is is us working on our own self-love. Because the way we let others that we have romantic partnerships with, the way that we let them treat us, and also your close friends and family too, the people you're very close with, the way you let them treat you is a reflection of what you believe you deserve. Now, when it's earlier on in life, you can't help that, but when you start to get older, you start to be able, when you become an adult, even if you're conditioned in a certain way, now you think this is what you deserve. And so what we do here is we work through all of that incorrect way of energy flowing so that you can be on the right way of energy, you know, so you can dance your way to love or peace and things. And also know that it always starts from the self. The self-love is the most important. Now, if it has to do with your money, your mindset, your business, you know, career or purpose, things like that, that has everything, everything, everything to do with healing your mind, okay, and healing your belief systems, having you understand and opening up your perspective to know, hey, there is this unlimited path in front of you, and you can do anything but you can't do everything. And so don't get caught up with having to be all here and there, making other people happy, trying to make yourself happy, feel like you don't know who you are. We just narrow it in here. Narrow it all the way in here, okay? Just narrow it in. You recognize or you identify what is important to you, and you make peace with the fact that that's what you like, because that's most of the problem. 
It's here for you. It's here for me. It's here for we. It's here for us. It's here for you. So you're never alone. You don't have to have all the answers to be on the right path. Mistakes are allowed and encouraged. You learn more from mistakes than getting it right. And you have to take responsibility for healing yourself on multiple levels. The mind, the emotions, the physical body, the mental, the belief, all of these things, the relationships you have with other people. It's a lot of work. It really is. But it is one of the best things you can do for yourself. I am a living testament. And most of that work I did on my own. Learning a little bit from here and a little bit from there. That's why I try to consolidate and just kind of give you all the things I've learned over time. And with all of this and all of my journeying and continuing to journey because sis loves the journey, I will say this. It's going to be okay, and you can trust yourself. You don't have to know the answers. You don't have to be whole. You don't even have to be happy to make that next step to get you on the path to where you want to go, to where you feel more whole, okay? The prerequisite is not everything has to feel good to make a decision that you want to be where you need to go. If you're on that path, the solutions you need will appear, but most important is to trust yourself. You trust yourself more than anybody. Anybody outside of you, trust yourself. The answers are always there, and the cool thing about it is it's going to take you all over, as my mom would say, all over the mulberry bush. You're going to go over here, going to go over there. It don't seem like it makes sense until you get to a certain point and you look back like, oh, all of this was interconnected, perfectly designed for you. There is no linear roadmap. It looked like this. <laughs> but that helps. Every little thing, every little interaction is healing as well. It's a part of it. It's a part of the purpose. It is a part of why we are here. So I believe, you don't have to believe this. That's your business. This is what I believe. I believe that we are this soul, this physical soul that incarnates into this body. I believe that this soul is infinite um, and what's out there, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, it's, it's hard enough to even feel like I can understand this part, right? I just feel like so small into the complexity of the universe. I don't think I'll ever be smart enough to know. But we are this soul that incarnates into this physical body. And perhaps we come back in different lifetimes and all of this. Now everyone has their own interpretation of what this is and why we're here and what this experience is. And that is good because you get to define why it is important for you to live and to enjoy and to learn and all of that kind of stuff. That's really important. You got to make that decision on your own. And the cool thing about it is as a species, because y'all know I love to get into us as a species. I go down rabbit holes of nutrition <laughs> and evolution all the time. As a species, we're so interesting because across all of these different cultures all around the world, we explain the divine in different ways. But there are these overlapping concepts that can be found, found in different places. And that makes sense because when these different cultures interact with each other, there's also a merging of understanding too. And even 
is something greater for you than this one moment. You can't get it wrong. Again, there will be challenges. It will be tough at times, but you can't get it wrong. Just keep going. Just take some more steps. Sometimes the fear is bigger than the actual problem. Sometimes the fear is bigger than the actual thing. And our minds are so strong that we can create the reality. That's what it's all about with this co-creation stuff. We create the reality and we materialize it. But it starts up here first and then it's physical. So if we're that strong, unconsciously, if we're in a fear state, no matter how we got there, if we're in a confusion state, no matter how we got there, we can still materialize it and attract that. So just know that it doesn't matter where you're at now. Even if you're not at the place that you want to be, in this moment, you can always make a decision to decide, that's where I want to be. And give yourself time. Because we overestimate what we can do in a year. But we underestimate what we can do in 10 years or a lifetime. You have so much time. Yeah, can't get it wrong. Think about it over time. Over time. Okay. So, I'm just gonna finish doing that and kind of just leave you with this energy, this message. You got this. You got this. Keep me filled in. I love to see when you're doing great things that you do remove things that are no longer serving you. But, you also have to create boundaries in maybe relationships, interactions that maybe are good for you. But all you have to do is actually lay some firmer boundaries down. Not everything is like, oh, you just gotta, you know, you don't like what somebody says, so you're gonna push them to the corner or something like that. It's not like that at all. Sometimes you have to give someone boundaries to give them structure so that they can treat you the way that you deserve to be treated, love. It can be, it could all be so simple, babies. It could all be so simple. So let's work on this protection first, okay? So that you have these energetic boundaries at first so people don't fuck with your energy. <laughs> and just placing it here, okay? And feel very relaxed in this moment. Feel very calm in your own sense of self. And feel very self-accepting, self-loving in this moment. It's very important that you surrender to the understanding that you are enough, that you are masterful, masterfully, that you are craftfully created and living and living out the life to the best that you can. And also, you got to celebrate your successes, even small ones. So we're going to place you here in this energetic frequency and just surround you with a sense of calm. Not you 
Question number one. <laughs> the first question I have to ask you 
insecurity thinking that it's a sense of security and having it just move within your mind as your life progresses to when you get to points in your life when you're looking at you know self-trust and do you trust yourself you are pulling from these unconscious situations and thinking that that is oh a person like that they trust themselves they blah 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 you know that's just kind of one of many examples or you could see on another situation someone that you perceived as very 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 compassionate oh they're such a compassionate person they were always giving to others they would um not give to themselves so that others could have but from an adult perspective you can see now that that person really lacked boundaries and because that person lacked boundaries they may have not been able to live the life they wanted to yes in the perception of Whenever you learned it in the moment, you might have seen it as something different. Oh, that's a good quality, X, Y, and Z. But boundaries are important. Filling yourself up is important. If you want to do great work, you want to be able to give to others as long as you can. You have to fill yourself up. If you don't fill yourself up, you will be finite, just like the work that you're doing will be finite. So in these moments, we're just going to take a couple of opportunities to Deconstruct, 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 deconstruct. Just those moments, years before, that are no longer serving or servicing you. Just those moments. Just those moments. You gotta let them go, let them go, let them go. Let them go, let them go, let them go. Let them go. Now, if there are or some great examples that you have in your life or if you were there in your life when you were younger and you could, you know, uh, uh, lead yourself in the path that you need to, that would have been awesome, right? You can't cry over spilled milk, but, but I often say that time doesn't exist. Yes, there was a yesterday and yes, there will be a tomorrow, but technically we only live in this moment. I've talked about it before in trauma. A lot of times when people traumatic situations, they might continue to relive that over and over again. So this one moment that was this finite amount of time, then continues to last the entire lifetime as the person gets in the habit, in the reinforced habit, uh, kind of really uh, torturing themselves over and over and over again, not really knowing how to get out of that. Of course, there are great solutions or great um, ways to navigate that mental and emotional health professionals through really looking at your life and making some changes and things like that. But to bring it back to this concept of time that I'm talking about, you know, it, it really doesn't exist. We will always live in this moment, whatever the, the this moment is, you know, we'll, we'll always live in it. So we don't have to put a lot of pressure about what happened back then or you know, anxiety about what's going to happen into the future. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to defy time. How are we going to defy time, you ask? Well, we are going to be the person, be the teacher, be the leader that we needed at those moments in the past by reconstructing the unconscious, the subconscious, to actually hold on to these values, these understandings, and these beliefs serve us better. And simply put, <laughs> we're going to reprogram you. <laughs> or you're going to reprogram yourself because only you really know what you need. So, I want you to take something that maybe has been a roadblock for you. Say you were trying to pursue your education and for some reason it just did not fall through. Or um, you were trying to connect in love and for some reason the connection is just working, whatever it is for you in your life, you know, it could be health too, you're always trying to get your health together, but it just doesn't seem to kind of be where it needs to be, whatever, 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 whatever that is, we are going to bring that together, and I want you to reduce it. 
voice whispering in your brain. I want you to tell yourself what is really the better thing to do, or, or as I like to say, what is the most highest vibrational thing that you could do in that moment. So as you're saying this, I want you to have that younger self, that younger energy, to have rebuttals to say things back well, but what, but what, but all of those, uh, you 
strong. 
yourself first and that just comes with the trust you gotta trust yourself baby you gotta trust you're gonna be able to make the right decisions in love and loving yourself now you have to ask yourself do you love yourself can you confidently look yourself in the mirror and say oh i love you i love everything about you you know i love the physical things about you the mental the emotional the spiritual the practical the delusional parts i love everything about you and truly mean it or do you feel like you're not allowed to have that a lot of people feel like they're not allowed to have it they assume that their outside is what should be happening on their inside so if you have dysfunction and chaos around you you might feel that vibration flowing within you as well and to that I would say you have to be able to separate yourself as you are removing yourself from that environment even if there's people in your life that you love to pieces but hey they're just a little bit too dysfunctional for you baby you gotta learn how to let them go or have boundaries because that's the only way to truly attract what you're looking for in love. Okay, good job, good job, good job. And may I say that when you love yourself, that is the quickest way to find someone. People always are thinking like, how do I get this person to like me? Or how do I get back with somebody you have no business getting back with? And I always say, when you like yourself, you attract a better quality it is those people that you have no business getting with or trying to go back to someone you ain't got no business going back to that keeps you in a vibrational state of thinking of yourself less. No, you want to be connected and surrounded by love that makes you think more. More peace, more calm, more love, more enjoy, more experiencing life. Because life itself isn't always about everything being easy and it just comes so easy. It's not that at all. But how are you even going to get to do the work in life if you're so busy, as my grandma used to say, chasing stupid. <laughs> and stupid was typically a person you had no business chasing. <laughs> you know, there's, there's difficulty in life when you have to learn things like discipline or you have to go after your dreams or goals. You don't have to do that in love. And there are some times when you need to have periods of separation from people so that you can realign yourself to what is good love. And when you stop chasing, it starts to flow into yourself. Feed yourself, build yourself up, okay? Breathing in and out here. Okay. So I'm going to start through your energy here and just allow yourself to flow with it and flow with yourself because now you're in a good enough state that you can just relax and trust that the love you have within is enough now let's go in and start to clean out all that old stuff 
go real quick type love, you know, the highs and the lows type love. You want a stable, resilient, resistant, just great foundation of this beautiful love surrounding you at all times. And so let's just break through anything that may come up in the process that makes it difficult, okay? Just work through this, work through this, work through this, work through this, work through this. Good job. I say this all the time about cinnamon. I love it because it just keeps burning. And it reminds us that not everything is instant. Things take time. It takes time to grow. And it takes time to fall apart if it's a strong foundation. So you can go through life and go through some things and things will be okay. But it's the type of love that if you are not surrounded by that particular person at every moment, you feel like it's going to just crumble from under you. Let it crumble. You don't have to deal with that. You don't have to deal with that. Also, also, stop giving people extra energy within you just because they're doing the bare minimum, okay? And you've had to deal with maybe things that were really just too much before. They're not great because they're doing the bare minimum. You deserve so much more, but it starts from working within yourself first, and that just comes with the trust. You gotta trust yourself, baby. You gotta trust you're gonna be able to make the right decisions in love. And loving yourself. Now you have to ask yourself, do you love yourself? Can you confidently look yourself in the mirror and say, oh, I love you. I love everything about you. You know, I love the physical things about you. The mental, the emotional, the spiritual, the practical, the delusional parts. I love everything about you and truly mean it. Or do you feel like you're not allowed to have that? A lot of people feel like they're not allowed to have it. They assume that their outside is what should be happening on their inside. So if you have dysfunction and chaos around you, you might feel that vibration flowing within you as well. And to that I would say, you have to be able to separate yourself as you are removing yourself from that environment. Even if there's people in your life that you love to pieces, but hey, they're just a little bit too dysfunctional for you. Baby, you gotta learn how to let them go or have boundaries. Because that's the only way to truly attract what you're looking for in love. Okay, good job, good job, good job. And may I say that when you love yourself, that is the quickest way to find someone. People always are thinking like, how do I get this person to like me? Or how do I get back with somebody you have no business getting back with? And I always say, when you like yourself, you attract better quality people. It is those people that you have no business getting with or trying to go back to someone you ain't got no business going back to that keeps you in a vibrational state of thinking of yourself less. No, you want to be connected and surrounded by love that makes you think more. More peace, more calm, more love, more enjoying, more experiencing life. Because life itself isn't always about everything being easy and it just comes so easy. It's not that at all. But how are you even going to get to do the work in life if you're so busy, as my grandma used to say, chasing stupid <laughs> and stupid you had no business chase. <laughs> you know, there's there's difficulty in life when you have to learn things like discipline or you have to go after your dreams or goals. You don't have to do that in love. And there are some times when you need to have periods of separation from people so that you can realign yourself to what is good love. And when you stop chasing it, it starts to flow into yourself. Feed yourself, build yourself up, okay? Breathing in and out here. Okay. So I'm going to start moving through your energy here. And just allow yourself to flow with it. And flow with yourself. Because now, you're in a good enough state that you can just relax and trust that the love you have within is enough. Now let's go in and start to clean out 
trust yourself that you're be, you're going to be able to decipher those situations. Then the next one is letting people go. I am the wrong person to talk to if you want to go back to the person that you've been struggling with for years. It works for some people, don't get me wrong, but like, look, life is too short for you to be making yourself so small in order to work through somebody else's shit. What you need to be doing is you were born in this life to live out a very important purpose that probably has nothing to do with making somebody figure out their self-worth by put, like pushing your self-worth down, okay? You have all these goals and gifts you have to share. You gotta get the distractions out the way, okay? So let that person go. If it's somebody that you've been dealing with for a long time, back and forth, and it's just not working, it's not going where you want it to go, let it go. If it's one of those situations where you don't feel like it's what you want, but maybe it's not the worst that you've seen, let it go, okay? If it's one of those things where you're just like, you know, you just want to be with someone so bad, so you're just looking, 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 but it doesn't feel quite right, let it go. Do not be afraid to be by yourself and trust in your love because when you're able to do that, you create this space in which the universe can then send you what you're looking for. Now, the way I try to do it is I was like, baby, have fun along the way. I say that all the time, you know, you can, you know, exit stage left and have a great time doing it. Like, this was fun. <laughs> you skedaddle, okay? <laughs> or if you want to date or do whatever, you know, have fun, but protect yourself. Be different when you approach love and trust your intuition. So many times we neglect the intuition that we have because we're looking at someone's potential rather than who they actually are. Believe them based off of who they are. Look at your own potential because that's the only potential you can control. You can't control someone else's potential. Everybody has potential in everything. But you're hoping that that person grows into the person that you want them to be. Is that the person that they want to be? Let it go. A lot of times when you hold on to things you need to let go, it's more of an addiction and an obsession than it is of actual love. I actually learned this word. I'm reading in uh, my personal book club, a Bell Hooks All About Love, and the word that's used is cathexis, C-A-T-H-E-X-I-S, and what it talks about is it's basically what a lot of people think love is, but it's almost like the obsession or the constant mental energy towards a person, an idea, a situation, but specifically in an unhealthy way, and we often think or have come to believe that love is hard, that love requires sacrifice, that love requires, you know, working through ish, and honestly, that's not the type of sacrifice, you know, you don't have to sacrifice with, you know, somebody cheating on you, or you're cheating on them, because you don't know what, what you want, you don't have to sacrifice with somebody being disrespectful to you, or you're being disrespectful to them, because they're not what you want, that's not love, that is cathexis, is a word, you know, and it's okay, it's okay to have that realization, and start to make your movement into something better, and guess what, it doesn't matter if you feel like you're the villain, or you're the victim in the situation, when you start to make changes, everything else shifts, I guarantee, for a lot of people who maybe feel like they feel bad, because they're like, oh, they wish that, you know, maybe they feel like the villain, as soon as they start getting better, the person that they're with is so used to who they were, that they're going to try to change roles, I mean, it's just like, it's, it's really, it's, it's toxic, <laughs> it is what it is, you know, and so sometimes you just gotta let it go, just let it go, let it go, release it, you know, <sighs> exhale, and fill yourself up with all this love so that you can go back into love in a new way, 
yourself.